Hello and welcome to Tea Time. I am here with Atlas and behind us are Ocasio and you can barely see Ari in the shed there. It's really fun to be home from my trip and uh, be with my horses again. And I have decided that I'm gonna go from what I was doing was tea time every single week. And these were live episodes where I would just talk about something that was on my mind or something one of you suggested, and then they would go on YouTube as well. We've been doing this for about four years now. And um, I've decided that I'm ready to step back from this a little bit. So I'm going to drop tea times down to once a month instead of once a week. Um, I will still put them up on YouTube afterwards and um, I will still continue the idea of tea time because I think it's really fun to do these short live episodes. Um, for those of you guys who are interested, next Tuesday I am also doing what I call a learning salon where we have a topic and it's a Zoom meeting and it's for all my Patreon members. So if any of you guys are interested in joining us for that, I would love to have you. It's only $3 a month to join the Patreon group. I want to make sure that it's really accessible for everybody who wants to be part of it. So, having gotten the logistics out of the way, um, I am here. It is August. I'm home. As you can see, Atlas is shaking off the flies a little bit. It's definitely summer weather here. Hi, Catherine. Thanks for joining us. Um, I wanted to talk today a little bit about freedom and about this idea of how much freedom can your horse handle. I think that... I worry sometimes in that first film that I did with Myrna that I give this beautiful demonstration of training and freedom. And in that first movie, I gave this sort of idea that um, horses would offer to carry a rider um, and that they can really enjoy it and they can choose to do it. Um, but I think sometimes maybe I don't emphasize the fact that some of them are able to do this and some of them are not. And this is a valid point that we should talk about. I also think that some horses can handle freedom better than others. Some horses have a lifestyle that allows them to do well in freedom and some of them do not. So Atlas here, who's with me, is an example of this. I got him as a stallion. I kept him as a stallion for almost five years. And, you know, that was my idea of letting him be fully and completely in who he was. But the problem was, as a stallion, he made some terrible decisions. And when he would make bad decisions, he couldn't really have any friends. Um, or said another way, he couldn't really be friends with any of the horses that I owned. And this was really, really difficult. I think horses are social creatures. They want to have friends. They want to have a community. And we struggled a lot with him being really dangerous when he would get concerned enough that he would have to defend himself against others. And unfortunately, when he would defend himself against others, it was a little bit more like an attack, which was quite dangerous for both people and horses. So he was gelded a couple of months ago and the change has been remarkably positive for him, even in such a short time, which I did not expect. He's now living full time with Ari, who's in the shed back there and Ocasio. He has friends, he has a family he can be fully social in a way that is much healthier now that he is not a stallion. This was one of the ways I took away one of his freedoms, his freedom to be fully who he was and make all of his own decisions. I took that away from him. 
and I chose a surgery for him that he would never have chosen for himself. And I did that so that he could have a better quality of life. We do this for our horses all the time. And we need to think about this with training too, because I actually think most horses would prefer good and clear dominance over freedom that puts them in situations where they're very stressed. So a lot of times as human beings, we put a horse in a situation where they feel like they have to defend themselves, go to fight or go to flight. And when they feel like they have to defend themselves, they feel terrible inside their body. And when they feel terrible, they don't want freedom. They want comfort. And I think very often we can actually give them much better comfort through dominance than we can through freedom. This is something that seems a little bit against my brand, but I feel like it's the honest truth. And I, I just wanted to speak about that a little bit today. When I go and teach clinics around the world, of course the horses aren't free. We've put them in an arena where they didn't choose to be. We've put them in front of an audience that they didn't invite. We've put them in a situation where they are far more stressed than they would be in a normal situation. And then I teach the theories of freedom-based training in a situation where the horse really is not free at all. And I acknowledge this and I point it out in the clinics that I teach and I want people to know that I am not imagining that the horse is actually free in those situations. All I'm doing is teaching people techniques that they can use around horses if they want to train in freedom. This is something I love. I love training in freedom. But really the best way to learn it is through something like my online course where you can have your horse in their home situation where you have hopefully a low stress environment where they already make very good decisions. And when they make very good decisions, they are left with feelings that are good, not overly concerned. So I've given this example of Atlas here when he was a stallion. He made decisions about being close to other horses or interacting with other horses that made him quite dangerous. And then after he was quite dangerous, he would be quite shut down. And these are all self-defense mechanisms he had from honestly making really bad choices. And I think a lot of those bad choices were due to the overwhelming impact of his hormones in the stressful situation of living near people and horses that he didn't know if he could trust yet. He had a traumatic past. All of that makes sense. At a certain point, it made more sense for me to take away some of his freedoms to give him a better quality of life. And this is a really important fact for everybody who has domestic horses. You will take some away, some freedoms away from them to give them a better life. And that is what they want. They want to feel good. They don't want to feel concerned. When they feel angry, when they feel like they have to run, when they feel like they have to defend themselves against somebody else's poor choices, this is uncomfortable for a horse. And honestly, if they're in a situation where it's just going to unravel, every defense mechanism they throw at the situation is going to make them feel worse and worse and worse. It's unfair to them to put them in those situations. I really believe good, clear dominance is probably best for horses. Um, I believe that good, clear dominance will help set them up to learn how to make very good decisions around human beings that result in them being relaxed, happy, content. The problem is I was a dominant trainer for a lot of years and I don't love being a dominant trainer. Um, it doesn't suit my personality type. It doesn't suit who I want to be in this world. I personally prefer freedom. Um, it's really hard for me to admit that horses don't always prefer freedom. Horses want to feel good. 
They want to feel comfortable. They want to feel relaxed. They want to feel like they can trust the people that they're with. And if we put them in situations where their stress gets too high and then they have to defend themselves with fight or flight, they, they would much prefer dominance or pressure that makes them feel relaxed than freedom that makes them feel concerned. And this is a hard thing for people like myself who prefer freedom. We think, well, come on Atlas, why don't you just make better choices? Make choices that don't make you feel concerned. Um, but horses aren't always capable of that. And, you know, one of the situations I often come up against is people say, I just want to go for a walk in the park with my horse. I just, you know, want to enjoy the woods with them. Well, your horse may or may not want to enjoy the woods. They may or may not feel the trail that you chose is safe or comfortable. And if you take them in situations that the horse don't, does not feel they're safe or comfortable, they are much better off in a situation where they are submissive to your signals and your commands because then you can tell them what to pay attention to that will ease their mind. You can tell them where to look, when to stop, when to go, all of those things that will help them feel reasonably safe. And when they feel reasonably safe, then they'll think you made good decisions. So when I teach freedom-based training, um, it's really meant to be done in the home, in their home space where they feel they can make good decisions and they don't feel like they have to put defenses up. From there, we show them that we understand their point of view. We do things around them. We move our body in, in predictable ways. We show the horse we understand how they feel. And then we start to shape their focus. And we shape their focus by helping them change focus from one thing to another. In that way, eventually we can go into more environments where we have the ability to say, look away from something that concerns you. Um, don't overfocus on something that makes you feel bad. And when we can do that really softly and gently, we then have permission to go out in more stressful situations. But most people aren't gonna take that kind of time. And so if you're not gonna take that kind of time at home, which is a lot of time, it's a lot more time than anyone realizes, I really encourage you to study some form of good dominance. That might be for some of you clicker training, um, where you can use food rewards as a motivation to get them to change focus before they get really concerned. Um, it might be pressure on your halter and lead rope. It might be uh, being able to direct through them through various yields. Um, there's all sorts of ways you can dominate them so that they change focus and they pay attention to things that make them feel good. In freedom-based training, we don't do that. But we also don't leave home until the horse can do it for themselves. And so the question that I posed here at the top of this tea time was, how much freedom can your horse really handle? And that's something that you have to ask yourself. So if you go out in the park with them, how much freedom can they handle? And, and do they, do they want to be there with you? If they don't, you either have to decide you're going to um, be more dominant so you can put pressure on them to focus on things that make them feel better, or you go home again. And that's really hard for people. I find most people want to have their cake and eat it too. And I do too. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm one of you guys in this. So, you know, I've got Atlas here over my right shoulder. I've got Ocasio over my left shoulder. And Ari's in the shed. These horses are doing an amazing job of teaching me about how we can try to have our cake and eat it too. If we want to have more freedom, we want to let the horses make their own choices, um, how do we do that in a way where they still feel really good and we haven't overfaced them with situations that are too stressful for them or too difficult for them? 
that same situation might not be stressful or difficult at all if they have a good, strong, dominant leader. And, you know, that's funny for me to say because I am, you know, that's not my thing. I I don't really work in dominance. But I have to say that I appreciate dominance. And I appreciate it specifically for the ability to refocus a horse before they get concerned. So before they feel like they have to defend themselves, which feels bad to them inside their body, before they have to defend themselves, it's our job to redirect their focus, to help them think about the things that make them lower their stress, that make them feel better, that help them feel like this is a reasonable situation. So Ari here, He's still a stallion. And I'm really happy that I have a couple of companions for him. And he gets to live a life with two other boys. And, you know, it's a pretty good life so far. Um, He would prefer that it was a little less hot out and there were less flies out, of course. But he can make reasonable decisions in his home environment here. And that's where we do most of our training. Um, I don't know how far from home we're going to really get to be going to be able to go with him as a stallion with him in freedom because I don't know that he's really going to make great choices that help him think of everybody's needs, not just his own. The uh, effect of hormones on a stallion are pretty intense and sometimes they make them quite defensive. Um, this is why we use good dominant horse training so that we can refocus them before they get obsessed with something that's going to cause them to fight or flight or do things that make them feel bad inside their body. So those are my thoughts for today. Um, I see there's a few of you guys watching. Thank you for joining me live. Um, I know this is going to be watched by many people later and I don't know that this is an easy subject. Um, This is one that might just need to settle in your your brain to think about for a little while. Most of the people who come to me and want to learn freedom-based training really believe it is the best possible way to train a horse. And I don't think that's true, actually. I think it is the best possible way to train a human. I think when we allow the horses to be free and we allow them to do everything that they want to do in their home environment, we have to learn about them much more deeply. And that is the real value of this training. When we learn about them much more deeply, then we can decide what kind of dominance we might use to help them focus their brain correctly if and when we put them in a stressful situation. So Joe says, I often feel like the truth for most things in life is somewhere in the middle. Maybe Myrna showed you one side and Atlas showed you the opposite. Either way, I've only ever seen you help set up horses to make the best decisions for themselves. Thank you, Joe. That is my goal. Absolutely. And I do think Myrna was an incredible blessing to me. She showed me the really free side of the equation because honestly, she could handle a lot of freedom. She was incredibly good at refocusing on the things that helped her feel good instead of feeling defensive. And that meant that it didn't take a lot of pressure from me to help her refocus, which meant we could do a lot of things without a halter. We could do a lot of things without food rewards. And she was a great teacher for me. Um, Some horses are gonna be like that. Other horses are gonna be a little bit more like my stallion project here, where it's not as clear cut. And ultimately, We want to set the horse up to make really good decisions so they don't feel like they have to be concerned and defensive. That's what's going to make their life the best. Whether you do that through making some choices for them or using pressure in your training or something else you can think of. Um, The end goal is just that they feel really good in your company. And I want everybody to know that there's a lot of different ways we can do that. Um, There are many roads to Rome. 
I really like exploring freedom, but that means that I will do the majority of my work at home where the environment is very relaxed and the stress is very low and the horses can easily make very good decisions. And then from that basis, we can go out into more challenging environments and see how good their decisions are. But if their decisions aren't very good, I either have to take it home again and do more training, or I have to decide to be more dominant so that I can use pressure to redirect their focus so that they feel good. Because that's really all they want, as they want to feel good in company. So I hope that gives you guys some good food for thought. Thank you for joining me for tea time. As I said, I will be doing a um, salon next week for my Patreon group. If you want to join us, I would love to have you. It's $3 a month to join. And I'm going to be doing this every month where we pick a topic and we explore it in a Zoom meeting and you guys can ask questions and um, we can really dive a little bit deeper like we do in tea time but a little bit more inclusive of all the participants. So thank you guys. I will be here live on Facebook again in September. I'm gonna do this once a month and then I will be in my Patreon group once a month as well. So have a wonderful day and I hope this was good food for thought.